The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. I am back. You are comfortably zoned with me, the Zigzag Man, in Alameda, California. And uh, we're right across the bay from San Francisco, across the moat from Oakland, in the northern part of the great state of California. And um, as usual, I talk to some of the most interesting people on the planet, on in the universe, however you want to put it. I, uh, I'm pretty dull myself, but I surround myself with people who are interesting. So let's see if it works for you. Uh, my guest today is uh, Donnie Worthington, former minor league player and uh, now just a civilian. Donnie, how are you? I'm good, Ralph. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'd like to get to know you a little bit. Um, where did you grow up, Donnie? I grew up in Denison, Texas. Okay. Uh, I've been here my whole life, I guess you'd say. I've been jumping back and forth from Denison to Oklahoma to play baseball in Oklahoma. Okay. And um, the, the theme of the of the day, because we don't know each other, very well. Maybe uh, I can get to know you through uh, some of your baseball experiences. Um, what made you decide to be a baseball player? Oh, I've loved baseball my whole life. Ever since I can remember, I guess I had a baseball in my hand. I mean, it okay. was a two sport. And uh, how did that uh, turn out on an amateur level? And how did that bring you to the attention of baseball scouts? Uh, what did you do memorable in high school, for instance? Well, my high school, I guess, I mean, I was always on a good team, I guess. I moved over to Oklahoma from Texas into a team, into Ashley, really. Uh, it's an Oklahoma, really good ball team at the time, as I'm my freshman year. Um, you know, we got to make it up into the regionals, I guess, you know, really close to state. You know, I played with a lot of good good guys. I was the only freshman on the team at the time, you know, and they really taught me how to learn how to put in the work that, that you know, really, you know, if you want something, you're really going to have to work for it. So that's pretty much uh, what I did. Donnie, who was your coach? Uh, my coach at the time was Mike Parsons, a uh, really good coach, you know, uh, had, the, had a great group of guys. Um, I, I really liked him as a head coach. You know, my senior, my junior and senior year, I had a former major leaguer. You know, he played for Tampa Bay. His name was R.J. Howerton. So, really good coach oh. as well. I know the name. Um, wonderful. So, uh, you never doubted that you were on the track to professional ball. Am I correct? Uh, no. I mean, I, I knew I had it, I guess. You know, I guess. I guess I was that kid that was too arrogant, you know. I mean, I knew I had the skills. I played, you know, as a as a youth, I, I went everywhere. You know, I was on all the all star teams. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I guess it just, just kind of found me. I guess, you know, I, it was something easy. I guess to me, you know, I never found nothing that I couldn't be good at. You know, you know, I, I surrounded myself with a group of guys that was always, you know, about helping each other. You know, I was really, really, really lucky there. I guess. Beautiful. Teammates uh, is what it's at. I think you live your life uh, by that motto, uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, le let me ask you, can we put a year to this? What year did you graduate high school? I graduated high school in 02. Okay. Did you think of college? Was, uh, was that an issue? And who drafted you? Uh, to give you an option of college or um, professional ball? Well, at the time, I guess in '02, I mean, I had a lot of choices I could go to. Um, at that time, I was trying to stay closer to home. You know, I had the University of Kansas I was really leaning towards. Uh, we had a great program back home in Durant, uh, Southeastern. You know, we have a JUCO right across the river, Grayson County College, and, you know, of course, another JUCO, Murray State College, you know. 
uh, at that time, you know, I was proud to go to go to Kansas. You know, I swear I was going to focus my mindset was on Kansas at the University of Kansas. And, right. You know, I just at that time, you know, who, I, who was recruiting you, know, you for the University of Kansas, and uh, what was that experience like being courted by uh, really uh, a Division A ball club uh, college? Well, I, I talked to a guy named Doug Nehaw, you know, uh, he used to be formerly with the Cincinnati Reds, uh, mm-hmm. really mental coach and a batting coach, you know, that was really working everything over there in Kansas at the time. Um, I mean, I loved it, you know, to be honest, you know, I didn't have the size that everybody was looking for, you know, my my prime option I was wanting to go to was LSU. Uh, that's where I really wanted to focus on was LSU. But of course, I was a inch too short for their program. I had everything else. The batting average was great. You know, I was hitting well over 800. My own base percentage was awesome. My fielding percentage was was amazing. I mean, I just I was locking the high division in that you know in that aspect in that college. So right, right. Um, where did you end up? I ended up playing a little bit of ball over at Southeastern and Kansas. You know, a little bit. You know, summer league stuff. I ended up at that time. Uh, you know, I was I was too focused on you know, the woman. You know, uh, the my what I would. Look, you know, let her call my my wife, my my boy's mother, my ex wife. Uh, I ended up walking away All from those baseball. Are, aren't women complicated? You can't fit them into into <laughs> one little package, just like you can't uh, determine because you're an inch short. Um, <laughs> statistics don't really matter with with certain things, and uh, um, in terms of uh, complicated women i'm sure men are just as complicated to them as uh they are to us so uh i'll leave it at that because i'm politically (laughs) correct and sometimes it helps helps to be politically correct am i right no you're (laughs) done all right um let me ask you another thing worthington um when i was a kid there was a uh Red Al Red Earth Worthington, who pitched for my favorite team, the New York Giants. And uh, I'm wondering if uh, there's some connection there. I have several Worthingtons that's played, you know, that, you know, in my family. You know, I had one that played for the Rangers. Uh, my family had a couple that played in uh, the Atlantic, uh, into the Brave system. Uh, I think I do have one that played in the Yank. You know, there was the Met system before the Brave system. Which, you know, of course, you know, I'm the younger one of the bunch, and my grandma and grandpa really thought that, you know, I was supposed to be the one that was be making it and going somewhere. So, are you actually a descendant of Al Red Worthington? I, I don't, I do not, I can't get, guarantee you that, no, sir. I mean, oh, okay. I can't well, give you that. Um, I, I can guarantee you that I'm not a descendant of Al. <laughs> so we uh, we have a lot in common. We can guarantee things. And there are things, obviously, we don't understand. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to be fast friends. Tell me how you got to the pros, who, rec- uh, who the scout was, how you were signed. Well, what happened was, I mean, I took a little bit off of baseball, to be honest with you. I took a couple of years off, or a few years off. I ended up going into the military. And then, of course, you know, I went through my divorce and stuff like that. And at that time, I thought, well, heck, you know, there's no sense in, you know, putting this on hold. You know, I was kind of late in my career. So I went through a couple of winter league organizations, the Arizona uh, Winter League, the Dominicans, you know. And then I went down to Florida to do a little Florida expedition on the, the Florida Winter League. And I, I met a guy named Jesse. Jesse Honesaker, uh, he was actually with the Miami, uh, the Marlins at the time. He told me he'd give me a shot inside the spring training camp uh, and see what we had, you know. Um, I did pretty good down there in the spring training camp. Uh, at that time, they was about to send me to a AAA organization down towards Mexico, which, you know, everybody loves Mexico, I guess. <laughs> I mean. Right. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, although the borders don't reflect that. But no, that's another no, story. Sir. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, so I, I kind of pursued it just a little bit, you know. I mean, I didn't really right. get, put my all into it like I, I wish I would have, you know. Uh, there was other options and other things that was going on in my life at that time. So, you know, at that point, you know, I went through there and 
you know, moved off from there and, and got to get into the Nationals organization and got to go into a spring training camp with the Nationals. And then at that point, you know, my foreseeable future in baseball, I guess I would say, came to a halt and stop, you know, by getting into a little bit of trouble and, you know, turning a, a bad road for myself. Okay. Well, um, you're honest about that. Um, you're reflective. Uh, when you look back, is there any one thing you would have done differently? Man, uh I guess, I mean, there's a lot of one things that would have done, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you, you get into that limelight, you know, and I've always had it easy in my life, you know, with baseball, of course, you know, I, I, everybody giving it to me, you know, I was, I was the top recruit coming out of Oklahoma. I mean, I was pretty good. So, you know, I, I wish I would have kind of put in the work that get a whole lot more, you know, I had great guys in high school, you know, that I played ball with Brian Baker, Billy Mullins, you know, Patrick Hayslip, you know, guys that I really looked up to that, you know, I really loved and truly, truly loved. And, uh, I mean, I just, I wish I would have put in a little bit more ethic into okay. it, you know. Well, uh, two things. First, I want to know what uh, the adjustment was between professional and amateur ball for you. And then I want to know what the adjustment to life after baseball was uh, was like for you. Um, first start with, um, day one training camp, the Marlins or whoever, whoever, I think the Marlins you mentioned were first before the Nationals. Um, what's that like? You're a pro, not an amateur. I mean, it's, it's actually a scary thought, you know, I mean, you, you go in to the, you know, there's a lot more room, you know, a lot more book work, a lot more paper time, you know, it's a lot more calibrating and breaking things down, you know. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, you do, I guess you're more scared about failing at the time, but I mean, you're enjoying it. You know, baseball is about loving it. You know, you got to really love it and go into it. And I mean, have fun at it. You know, if you're having fun, you're going to do great things. You know, I mean, it was just, a, it's a lot more paperwork, a lot more, you know, video times and stuff like that. You know, you really, you really learn the aspect of what baseball is all about. Okay. Now you were 20, 26 rather. Yes, sir. Okay. So you were mature. Um, that maturity, although it probably costs you points in being a prospect because they're always looking for the younger guy, how did that maturity help you day-to-day uh, -to -day in minor league ball? I mean, it helped me stay focused, you know. I mean, well, you know, you see the young ones out there, you know, kind of jumping from one place to another place, you know. They kind of, you know, if you don't – you have that more party lifestyle, I guess you'd say. You know, I got to really keep them in focus. You know, I had two boys at home, you know, that I was really wanting to, you know, impress and, and, and to show at the time, you know, that, you know, daddy's still right. had any. So, I mean, it, 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 it made me keep my head to the ground, so I want to be honest with you. Beautiful. Now, um, for the more painful part of the discussion, um, how did you transcend um, – um, baseball life to civilian life? Well, I kind of had no choice. Like I said, you know, I, I kind of found myself in the other end of trouble, you know, and then, mm -hmm. you know, getting away from that and, and having to rebuild my whole self and, and my lifestyle, you know, to get back away from that, you know, I got lucky and, you know, I, I met a beautiful and amazing woman, you know, her and her two girls, you know, and my boys, you know, they really helped me, you know, you know, find myself again, you know, find the true meaning of me, you know, I, I just, I was blessed about that, you know, my, my oldest, you know, stepdaughter, she's, she's amazing at softball, you know, my youngest stepdaughter, she has her own personality, she's great at painting, you know, my boys both love baseball, they're, they're going to be two top prospects, you know, when they get older, you know, so, I mean, I was, I was lucky, you know, I mean, they found me broken, and, you know, they, they came to me broken, you know, and they're able to help me build me and turn me back to the person that, I intended to be, you know, so I, honestly, I was blessed, you know. That's heartwarming. Because having been on the precipice of disaster myself in life um, and been saved by folks around me, women, uh, men, uh, it's, it's a, a great story. It makes me feel good, Donnie. I was lucky, you know, like I said, I mean, I chose the bad path for a while, you know, I I didn't care at the times, so I, I put my family and friends, you know, away, you know, and, you know, 
you know, my boys never gave up on me. You know, this woman, she never lost hope in me, you know, her kids. I mean, it's just, I, I, I'm very blessed, you know, but I mean, it's still every day, you know, it's a fight, you know, I mean, it's my job to, to, you know, show and work and to be a better man and to be a better husband for her and, you know, and be a better dad for them kids, you know. So I'm just, every day, it's a, it's a, it's a strive for me to push and keep working for them, you know. Nice. Nice. How do you stay in touch with baseball? What's your connect now? Well, now I'm actually hitting and uh, training, you know, instructor over here at the DBAT. Um, I'm working inside the colleges and my local colleges as well as uh, getting some college kids, you know, into it. You know, I'm lucky I got my two boys, you know. Uh, my oldest is a junior now that should be going anywhere he wants to. He's probably one of the best hitters I've ever seen in my life, you know. Like I said, yeah. my, my, yeah, my, the girl, my girl, she's one of the best softball pitchers I've ever seen in my life. I mean, my youngest boy. Is amazing at hitting as well. I mean, I'm I'm just I've got plenty that's going to keep me on going and keep me into it. You know, uh, I plan on getting a whole lot more involved as in, into the coaching and to the training aspect of baseball now. Now, say somebody was out there and they had a child um, to groom, if you will, and uh, they had the wherewithal to do it privately, uh, get some private help. Um, what would you tell them about uh, Donnie Worthington that would make their choice of uh, a coach um, um, more solid in the, their minds? And how can they get in touch with you? Uh, I mean, my thing is, is, you know, I mean, a kid that's wanting it, that's really wanting to push through it, I'm going to be there for that kid no matter what. You know, I'm, I'm going to train him from any ways and levels that he wants to do it. I'm going to build him into the player that he wants to be, you know. I mean, my, my biggest thing is is I, I always had a coach, you know, a father that, you know, would never turn his back on me, you know, even at my lowest. I mean, he would still, you know, push me through it, you know. I just want to be a supporter, you know. I want to be – you know, when he's having the bad day or they're, they're having the bad day, that I can be there to help support him and, and we can build off of that because every, every kid deserves a chance. And everybody that was the heart of this, you know, this game, I mean, this is all about love, you know, and I can develop any kid that loves this game. You know, that's, that's no no option right there. You know, I won't ever give up and I won't ever quit on them. And as far as getting a hold of me, I mean, the easiest way right now, they can go to the DBAT, Texoma, and schedule lessons with me through there, or they can contact me personally by my cell phone number and schedule lessons there as well. Beautiful. Um, you want to give your cell phone number? I uh, wouldn't blame you if that weren't uh, a good idea in your, in your <laughs> mind uh, in, yeah. today's day, in today's day and age. But uh, clearly state your email address where they can get you. Uh, they can shoot me an email. At, it's worthingtondonny1 at gmail.com. And okay. if they wanted to shoot me an email at that one, they can shoot me an email anytime, and I'll respond back to it quickly. Uh, and like I said, I'll be there. My biggest thing is, you know, showing the kids support. You know, if you support them and showing them that they, they're improving and stuff like that, I mean, every kid's going to love this game, you know. I mean, who don't love baseball? Um, I can t tell you that um, it's tough to love in today's day and age. Um, uh, how has baseball changed in your lifetime? You know, I mean, it's changed tremendously. I mean, you know, I mean, back <laughs> when I was growing up through baseball, I mean, it was baseball. You know, it was it's America's pastime. It was. You know, I, I you've seen a thousand kids out there trying to do it. I mean, nowadays, I mean, it's starting to, you know, slow down in the, the cities that I'm around. You know, you don't see as many kids coming out for baseball no more. I mean, it's just, you know, there's too much technology in life nowadays, you know. I mean, everybody's wanting to spend time inside the house and on these gaming centers and stuff like that. I didn't have that one. Well, uh, Donnie, what rules do you like? Recent rule changes do you like? And what do you particularly abhor? I really don't agree if they ever turn in this pitching clock. I don't like that idea, you know. Uh, baseball's, okay. meant, baseball's meant to, you know, take a long time. I mean, everybody, you know, I'm a pitcher guy. I love watching the pitcher battle. You know, I mean, most, you know, you get different types of, you know, 
people and fans. You know, I I like the games that are one and zero or you know one and two. I love them games. I mean, to me, that's a battle, especially when you're playing them games. I mean, because you're looking at, I mean, you're looking at solid defense, solid pitching. I mean, and you know, and team strategizing to play baseball. You know, that the the big home run stuff. I mean, that's good. That's amazing. I know fans love that. You know, but I really like the small game. I like the the base hits, the moving the base runners. You know, the the advancing. The, I mean, I like the strategics of playing baseball. You know, like like. Hey, how, how about the fact that we haven't heard the expression "get them on, get them over, and get them in"? You uh, don't hear that anymore, right? And that in itself um, is is terrible. Uh, what do you think of the prospective DH in both leagues? That's kind of, I mean, to me, I mean, you're taking away the, the, the aspect of playing baseball, you know. I mean, let the pitchers hit. Let the pitchers, you know, earn their way. You know, back in the day, I mean, the pitchers hit. You know, I mean, it's just, I, I just, the DH again, I mean, you're looking at throwing a guy in there that's going to be hitting. I mean, averages have gone, went way down in the game, you know. I mean, a, a 280 average is a great average. I mean, I don't see how. You know, I, I really, uh, you know, you're losing the aspect. It seems like everybody on the team wants to swing for power nowadays instead of, you know, worrying about getting a base hit. Like you said, you know, get them on, get them over, you know, two-strike hit, approach the plate. You know, you don't see that nowadays, you know. Right. Hitting to right, that that sort of thing. Um, I mean, that's the that's the thing that I teach my boys is, I mean, we, we directional hit and we, we hit to move the base runners. We hit to, to help the team. Beautiful. You're going to make a great major league coach someday, my friend. It, oh, all, sure starts, <laughs> it, it all starts in your head. And yes, um, I enjoyed getting to know you a, a little bit. Well, I appreciate the time. I very, I very much appreciate the time. It was nice meeting you and finally getting to talk to you. Good. And um, like they say, um, one day at a time, one step at a time. Yes, that's exactly what I can do. You know, I mean, I got I got a great family support, you know, system around me, and that's all I can do is go up from here. Beautiful. Nice meeting you, Donnie. Donnie Worthington, I'm Ralph Tycho, Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. I'm a lucky guy. I get to talk to good people. Thanks for listening, everybody. Adios and happy trails. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.